Of course, I would have still loved to see, being Canadian, I still would have loved to see a card that was the opening of the first. Welcome to Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples, a channel of conversation and board games. Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples. Today on the channel, we are going to be going back in time. Today, we'll be trekking through history and going to witness and experience some of the most fascinating events in human history. We may also visit some of our ancestors in this drafting set collection game from Underdog Games entitled Trekking Through History. How does it play? What are my thoughts on the game? We'll find out first. Cue the thunder. So checking out the radar overview for Trekking Through History, a game all about time travel and going and visiting and experiencing some fascinating events throughout human history. As you see, the production of this, absolutely top notch. You have this beautiful neoprene mat that comes standard of the game, all these tokens, and then you have a whole bunch of cards representing three different days on your journey. You have, you know, I have it set up day one, and then each deck is a different day. So day two and day three. I will also say not only is the components uh, production quality fantastic, but also the insert, game trays insert, everything fits nicely in there and just overall slam dunk from underdog games. I'll also show you that they also come with one reference card showing what cards and the dates of the cards are in each of the decks. So how does this game play? As mentioned, you will be going on a journey, three journeys represented by three rounds, which are three days. And you will be visiting and experiencing some fascinating events throughout human history. As well, you potentially may be visiting your ancestors. I'll also note that I have it set up here with the Time Warp mini expansion. 24 cards in this, which will give a little bit of added flair in the game you'll be using three of these cards one per round so a lot of replayability with these cards for sure so how does this game play well on your turn you're going to be taking a card that's pretty much what you're going to be doing each turn you're going to be starting off each player will start off with an itinerary each day they'll be getting a new itinerary and like i said on your turn you will be picking a card you can pick any one of these cards from the destination row or you could visit your ancestors, which I will uh, make mo tell you about in just a moment. So let's just say it is the yellow, let's say it's the blue player's turn. Let's flip this around here. It's the blue player's turn because I got their little blue uh, time crystal bank here. Each player also starts with one time crystal. I should add that. So on your turn, you can take a card. Let's say the blue player takes this one because you want to start kind of in chronological order because you can only move forward in these cards you can never go backwards so let's take 708 b c e at that point i would have to pay the two hours because i spent two hours checking out the olympics back in the day i would move two on this clock after that i would then gain whatever experience is on here so a blue one as well whatever bonus underneath the card which is one of these gold ones as you see, there are different things you can fill and cover up on your itinerary sheet. Anytime you fill out a complete row and it has a victory point uh, at the end, you gain those victory points. And anytime you cover up any one of these that has you know, victory points or a time crystal, you can then gain those victory points and or time crystals as well. So it is the blue player, they just finished. Then it doesn't go in turn order around the table, but rather whoever's furthest back on the time clock. So the yellow player would go, they probably would take this one. They would also spend two hours and then they would move there. At this point, they're both, both players are on the same uh, spot, but whoever's on the top would go. So then the yellow player would go, they would take a card. Let's just imagine with me here, that they visited their ancestors. I'll talk about that in a moment. Then it comes back to the blue player's turn. They can take this. They would jump ahead, so they would never be able to put anything between 708 BCE and 655. In, in between those, they would once again gain a blue crystal, 
or not a blue crystal, pardon me, a blue token, and they would gain one of these purple gems. These are time crystals, and you can use these to not spend as much time in a specific location. So I could spend the one that I previously had, instead of moving three, I could then just move two, one, two. So then it would be my turn again. So you can kind of set things up a little bit depending on where you are in turn order, what cards are out there, how many time crystals you have, and you know where you are on this time track. I will say this, um, in this time warp situation, each player would be given a second one of these blue markers. Instead of taking a card, I could then put my card or my token there for one time and I would gain a wild token. All other players would gain a red token. So then I could take a wild token, put it here, and as a result, I've now finished that, that row. I would then gain two victory points. So as you see, you're gonna be filling up this itinerary and making your trek as long as possible because the more cards you have in your trek, the more points you're gonna get. Let's say it comes back to my turn and I really don't want to jump, you know, another 500 years. At that, at that uh, point, I could take one of these cards, visit my ancestors, and I'd put it into my trek. At that point, I'd have to pay my three time. One, two, three. I gain a wild token. Let's say I cover up the four. I will say this, anytime you get these tokens, you have to put it at the highest mark. So I couldn't have, well, I could have done that, but I couldn't uh, go down here to the two. So I could do that, gain four more victory points. And what does the ancestor do? This kind of like puts your trek on hold. So I stay at 655, maybe the other player, they take a couple cards or whatever, hoping, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, there's a card that comes out that's maybe not as far in history as 1110. As you see, there's not right now. Yeah, maybe I was hoping that maybe this card would come out. I could then put that one there. And so as you see, you'll be going around as soon as you hit one, two, three, four, as soon as you hit the top of the clock, your day is then done. So you may hit it well before other players. Uh, they would continue to take their turns until all the players would hit the top. And then you would start the new day. Everybody would discard their itinerary. They gain a brand new itinerary and you would continue going. These cards would be wiped out. You would then start day two. And I just want to show you some of these cards and um, the artwork is fantastic. And it's just really cool that on the back of all the cards, it tells you about the event that's on the front. So, you know, study relatively with Albert Einstein, observe the dodo birds, uh, go uh, with Dar Charles Darwin, read Braille with Helen Keller. You know, there's just tons of things that they've included in this game. And it's just fascinating with the artwork and just everything about it. Just looks really, really good. Neoprene mat, two big thumbs up for that because I love neoprene mats and metal coins and this one has one of the two. So that is, in a nutshell, how to play Trekking Through History. Let's now check out the final forecast. So the final forecast for Trekking Through History if you follow the channel, you'll know that I love games that last between a 30 to 60 minute. That's my sweet spot. Doesn't overstay its welcome. You get in, you have some tough, interesting, tense choices, decisions, and it wraps up in about an hour. That is my sweet spot. And I feel so honored that Underdog Games did that for Trek in the World. And this game, like, legitimately made for Brent, 30 to 60 minutes. Like, I just feel so honored that they did that. And they thought of me when uh, making this game. Um, this game is fantastic. Let's start with the components. Let's start with the artwork. Components. You got those nice tokens. You got those big itinerary uh, player boards. You have that nice neoprene mat. I love that. That's one of the things that I upgrade my games to. And this game, I don't have to do that. It comes standard in all copies of the game. And I just think that's an absolutely amazing thing. It just elevates the game that much. The table presence is that much greater and it just looks great. Artwork, those that deck of cards, or three decks makes one giant deck of trekking cards. Man, to distill human history down to 108 cards must have been an 
unbelievably big undertaking for underdog games. Of course, I would have still loved to see, being Canadian, I still would have loved to see a card that was the opening of the first Tim Hortons because that was like monumental. And let's be honest, that's still monumental. Uh, apparently, they took it out in some of the playtesting. I don't know, but I would love to see that stay in. And of course, everybody who's playing this game is thinking, man, I would have loved to see this or I would love to see that. But to make that decision to have 108 cards and to pick those 108 events um, must have been just agonizing at times. So props to Underdog Games for that. Um, I feel that when you play your first game, the longest thing about the game is going to be looking at those cards. It's not going to be learning gameplay because gameplay is streamlined, it's smooth. Um, it's going to be looking at all of those trekking cards and flipping them over and reading what happened on that event or, or like the event that's um, shown, illustrated. And I think that's really cool. I played this with my kids and I've been like, what's that one? And my kids have been like, what's that? What's that? And I've had a chance then to tell them a little bit about the history of things that have happened in the past. And I think this is a great, great teaching tool. If you are a history teacher or a teacher in general and you want to bring extra fun into your classroom via learning as, uh, like, and learning at the same time, like this is an absolute slam dunk. If you do homeschooling, this is a great way to teach history as well. And so, I, yeah, I just love that. Um, I will say on the first play that time track or whose turn it is, that might be a little bit of a learning curve for some because typically in games, you just go around the table and that's it's your your turn the person whatever on your right or after they go but this is different because depending on where you are in that time track the last person gets to go so let's say in a two-player game you kind of have a little bit more manipulation of that with those time crystals that you can spend those so that you can get multiple turns in a row with the higher player count i don't think you'll be able to do that as as much or as well i will also say this i'm basing my uh, my review here on two player plays so i have not played at the higher player counts um but i can imagine that it plays very similar you'll you'll probably most likely see actually you will not probably you will see more of those trekking cards in the higher player count because people will be taking cards so more and more variety will come out every game that might hinder you in doing your trek but it might actually help you i don't know it could go both ways in a two-player game those six cards won't uh, file through as fast that river of cards won't file through as fast but i think you can do a little bit more tactical um uh, planning and strategic planning in that sense because there is only one person in front of you but i will say that i haven't played at the higher player count but overall I, uh, this game is great the tension in this game of you know taking specific cards in your trek versus you know folding up your trek or grabbing an ancestor card in hopes that a card comes out i love those tension filled uh, turns and i have to say i love those itineraries because it gives you something to work towards it gives you if like a focus and i think those are all pretty balanced i was counting the uh, counting those and how many points you can get on each of the cards i think the lowest one is like 22 and the highest one is 30 with the majority of them being 24 to 28 or 26 somewhere around there and i think that's a good balancing uh, mechanism because you can you know that's a viable strategy of having shorter treks but filling up your itinerary getting points getting more time crystals to spend later on in the game or you know getting super super long treks because you get 10 cards in your check you get 30 points and then each card after that is an additional three so i love that tension and sometimes it is beneficial to jump you know 1100 years 1200 years in your trek just so that you can get specific tokens to finish off like a whole row and that's so satisfying so i have to say man th this is just fantastic time warp i love that all those cards just seem super super powerful and you look at them after you've played the game a few times you're like oh that would be so good in this situation oh this round all history cards 
or tr like trekking cards cost one less time and so you can get potentially that many more cards in your trek and just overall man this game is absolutely fantastic um, I've enjoyed it playing with my wife. I've enjoyed playing it with my kids. They've enjoyed playing it, learning along the way. Top-notch components. This game is like the perfect game that will be wrapped up under the Christmas tree this year and for many years to come because it's just solid. I think they could even like expand, have an expansion deck, another 108 cards that you can just double the events per, per day. Um, it's it's yeah it's set up for that but overall 90 percent chance of meeples for trekking through history it's absolutely top notch i highly recommend checking it out 90 percent chance of meeples my name is brent check us out on facebook cloudy with a chance of meeples remember grab your umbrella the forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples.